Welcome to a series of videos dedicated to the fabulous geology of California. My favorite place is Death Valley, the lowest, hottest, and driest place in North America. Death Valley is known for its extremes, but what surprises visitors most is its extreme beauty. How all the desert beauty came into being is a fascinating tale of geologic upheaval. This first video will explore the formation and the rocks of Death Valley. First of all, Death Valley is not a valley. If you want a valley, go to the Grand Canyon. The Colorado River carved it on its way to the ocean. A valley is a low area that was carved through the land by water or ice on its way to the ocean or another low-lying body of water. Death Valley is certainly a low area between mountains, but it couldn't have been carved by water or ice on its way to the ocean, because the floor of Death Valley is below sea level. In fact, the center is 282 feet below sea level. Water may flow into Death Valley, but it never flows out. It evaporates instead. The center of Death Valley is known geologically as a graben, a down-dropped block of crust between two higher blocks known as horsts. The word graben means grave. As the crust is stretched apart, the graben falls down along faults, normal faults to be precise. Death Valley is the most dramatic of a series of grabens in a province of the United States known as Basin and Range. The basins are the grabens and the mountain ranges are the horsts. Mountains formed in this way are called fault block mountains. In this cross section of Death Valley, you can see the faults and downdropped center, but you can also see that there is sediment on top of the downdropped bedrock, over a mile of sediment, so that the center of the valley is not just 282 feet below sea level, but the bedrock dropped over 9,000 feet and has since filled up with sediment. The best way to get an overview of Death Valley is to go to Dante's View. There you will be one mile above the floor of the valley or the basin and about 20 miles from the range, the snow-capped Panamint Mountains. If you look to the north, you might get a view of the Sierras and the highest point in California, Mount Whitney, at the same time, you're looking at the lowest point in California, Death Valley. Over the last 30 million years, Basin and Range has been stretching apart, leading to thousands of episodes of earthquakes, faulting, uplifted mountains, and down-dropped basins. In this aerial view of Nevada, you can see that the crust has been pulling apart in an east-west direction resulting in parallel basins and ranges. Vaulting is still happening in Death Valley. The cliff that results from the downward movement of rock along a fault is called a scarp. Here, you can see an eight-foot fault scarp on the side of Badwater Road, just south of its intersection with Route 190. We don't know the age of the scarp, but there must have been a large earthquake accompanying the down-dropping of the valley floor on the right relative to the mountains on the left. As the crust is extended, it thins and allows the upwelling of magma. As a result, Basin and Range is also associated with volcanism. Rocks of many colors abound in Death Valley, but if you see black rocks, you're almost always looking at basalt, either in the form of lava flows or intruding into the older sediments as dikes. Here's a basalt lava flow seen on the way to Dante's view. Also, in this picture, you can see the Furnace Creek Formation, which formed from lake deposits and contains borate minerals. The Billy Mine, just outside the park boundary, mined borax and eulexite from the Furnace Creek Formation. Finally, the colorful Artist Drive Formation can be found to the left is a great photo for geology fans because it also shows an angular unconformity, this red contact below the lava flow. The Furnace Creek Formation formed originally as horizontal layers on a lake bed, but here they have been tilted, uplifted, and then the top became an erosional surface upon which the lava flow was later deposited, an angular unconformity. 
But wait, there's more. There has to be a fault between the Furnace Creek Formation and the Artist Drive Formation, but we can't see it. It's covered up by those black rocks. Where did they come from? Well, they fell down from above, landing in a steep pile at the base called a talus cone. Are those two more talus cones to the right? If so, where could they have come from? Well, they're composed of sand and gravel and they look out of place. That's because they are mine tailings left behind by the miners. The colors of the artist's dry formation are derived from volcanic ash. They are best seen at artist's palette. The colors are a mixture of iron oxides and chlorite compounds that were derived from the weathering of the volcanic ash. In northern Death Valley, there's a cluster of unusual volcanic craters. The Yubahibi volcanic field consists of Mar volcanoes. They formed only about 6,000 years ago when the groundwater contacted magma below ground, steam built up until it exploded in a phreatic or steam eruption, spraying volcanic and bedrock debris high into the air, creating craters. The largest, Yubahibi crater, is a half mile in diameter and 500 feet deep. Here, you can see the sedimentary bedrock covered by volcanic debris called tephra. Let's finish this first video about Death Valley with a shamefully simplified overview of its formation and history with the associated rocks. The oldest rocks of Death Valley are Precambrian, 1.7 billion year old metamorphic, highly contorted rock called gneiss. Then the area became a shallow sea. 700 million years ago, algae created the beautiful noonday dolomite of Mosaic Canyon. I'll discuss Mosaic Canyon in my next video. Just above the noonday dolomite in Mosaic Canyon, you can find sterling quartzite, which indicates that the area was a shoreline environment, such as a continental shelf. Since quartzite is metamorphosed sandstone. Starting with the Cambrian, about 540 million years ago, there developed a carbonate platform, that is, a shallow basin near enough to the equator that algae could deposit calcium carbonate, the main ingredient of limestone. If you drive to Death Valley over Town Pass, you will see mountains of limestone. This was the environment for millions of years all the way to the Mesozoic. During the Mesozoic, specifically the Jurassic about 200 million years ago, the Farallon Plate was subducting underneath the North American Continental Plate. The resulting magma that got to the surface created a volcanic arc similar to today's Andes Mountains. The magma that cooled deep underground became granite. When the Sierras were uplifted, the volcanoes eroded away, revealing the granite of the Sierras, such as the granite you see in Yosemite National Park. Hunter Mountain, located in a remote northwest corner of Death Valley, contains a rock very similar to granite, quartz monzonite. The igneous intrusions of this time are responsible for the metal deposits, such as gold and silver, that were mined in Death Valley. One of the few successful mines was the Keen Wonder Mine that operated in the early 1900s. You can still see its aerial tramway that brought gold ore down from the mountain by means of gravity alone. Starting about 300 million years ago, subduction ended and with the start of the San Andreas Fault, the crust started to stretch and break along faults, forming basin and range. During the Pleistocene, or the Ice Ages, there was copious rain in the area, filling all of the basins with water. The largest of the lakes is Lake Manly, in today's Death Valley. We can find evidence of old shorelines of Lake Manly at Shoreline Butte, which was once an island in the middle of the lake. Finally, the last of the ice retreated from the mountains and the lakes dried up leaving Death Valley the deepest, driest, and hottest place in North America. 
In the next video, I will talk about the lakes, playas, canyons, and alluvial fans of Death Valley. These videos are meant for geology enthusiasts, but they are not travel guides. I did write a travel guide to Death Valley, complete with maps, directions, and a variety of topics. The tour can be downloaded to your device before heading out to the land of poor cell phone coverage. It can be found on Amazon, and there's a version available at Tours for Mobile that even contains my narration keyed to each location. End of shameless promotion. I do hope that you will visit Death Valley, but please don't go in the summer. That would be foolish indeed.